Hey everybody, Mo Buttle here, your host at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. Today, today I'm joined by Linda Klein. She's she's one of the people I aspire to be on an extremely short list of people that I, that I look up to, to the level that I look up to Linda. She's not only senior managing shareholder at, at Baker Donaldson, a very large law firm, um, she's a legend in law. Every About every single award you could get in law, she's got at Chambers, everything else. But but I think more more importantly for me, as the, as the father of two daughters, she was the first female president of the of the Georgia Bar. She was president of the National ABA, the American Bar Association. The number of trailblazing things Linda has done in her career boggles my mind. And in this particular episode, we dig deep into the genesis of all that. The moment that Linda learned that that growth is great, that relationship development, business development is something that that she wanted to to lean into to become great at. And if you're interested in like how she approaches relationship, how she thinks of bonding with people and and adding value, stick around to the end of this episode because we dig deep into how Linda thinks about commonality and and approaches initial conversations. Really cool stuff. Let's get straight to it. This episode is so good. The four after it are as good or maybe even better. It's so good to watch this in a series. I can't, I, I don't want to wait anymore. Let's dive in right now. Here's Linda Klein. Hey everybody, it's Mo Bunnell, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. I'm smiling from ear to ear because I've got one of the folks that I look up to immensely here for you on the show today. Her name's Linda Klein. She's she is a senior managing shareholder at Baker Donaldson. She's past president of the ABA, world, you know, countrywide. She was the first woman president of the Georgia Bar. Linda, I look up to you as the person where when people say to me, "I don't know how you do so much." You're the person in my mind, I think, well, I do half of what Linda Klein does. So I, I'm just so thrilled to have you on the show. I'm so thrilled to introduce you to our platform and all the people who can learn from you. Um, so first question, first episode, right out of the gate. You are so great. And I look up to you for because you're so great at seeing a change that needs to happen in the world with a client, with a group with a cause, with the ABA, whatever, and then you create growth. You create growth opportunities for other people. When was the moment you realized that growth was great, that being a change agent, a positive change in the world is something that you wanted to, that you wanted to do? The, the answer may be oh, not as exciting uh, as, as you were expecting because I, I take the words building a relationship and business development, and I separate them. First, business development. Uh, as a 23-year-old young lawyer, I was assigned a small case for a client in the moving and storage business. And I took the job very seriously, and I did the very best I could do. Uh, the clients were 30 years my senior, maybe more. And I talked to them frequently about their case. I went to their office. I went to their warehouse. And soon, I was the only lawyer that the clients would talk to. They wouldn't talk to the bosses anymore. And the clients said, well, we always had to go to the lawyer's office. No lawyer took the time to come see me or to see their facility and learn how they do business. No lawyer paid attention to them and no lawyer listened as far as they felt. So at the time, I didn't know I was doing business development. And as far as I knew, I was just doing my job. So I guess the first point is when you're starting your career, you do your best and the rest will come. But specifically, I took the time to go to their office rather than sit in my own. I took the time to learn their business. And that lesson stayed with me my entire career. It's so rich and so good. And I remember we were at lunch once and I might, I might paraphrase this wrong, so I want you to correct me. But I think you said something like, being a good business person that happens to know a lot about law is really a powerful thing as opposed to only being a good lawyer. And does that, is that sort of where you're going by learning their business, showing up, showing them attention, showing them you cared enough to, to learn what the business was like, and then applying the law to the case you were working on? What are your thoughts? Yeah, exactly. It, it's not about developing the business. It's about developing the relationship. Uh, one of my retired partners made an absolute art 
of making his clients his personal friends. They'd play golf together. The spouses would play bridge and golf. And, and it was very, very impressive. And it worked so well for him. I don't think it works now, but that's, a, that's an example. But, you know, I, I just thought of something I'd like to share. Uh, it's, a, it's a part of my life that I just realized related to this context. Uh, when I was six years old, my grandpa Harry said, your grandmother and I were married in March of 29, and I opened my grocery store. Then he said, we had no idea of the depression that was to come. People were starving. And then he told me about the first form of welfare. Women were sent by the government to his store, and they sat in the corner of his store and decided what the poor people were going to eat that week. He said, Linda Ann, that's awful. People should be able to choose what to feed their family. And he talked about the cultural differences around food and the immigrant community that he served. And he said that the ladies might decide that an Italian family was going to eat potatoes when they wanted pasta. And then he leaned forward and he said, sometimes when the ladies left, I exchanged the food. Now, my grandfather built a relationship with the community. And he was helping his neighbors through a very tough time, and they loved him for it. So while the longer version of this story is really about why I became a lawyer, the lesson I just realized it related to here for you is that the key to successful business development is relationship. Yeah. I, well, you know, of course, our system, and I could not uh, agree more. It's just so powerful. Well, let's get super practical. And one of the things I, I get feedback on the show is people like the concepts, they like the big ideas, but they also love just the sheer practicality of something they can put in place right away today. When you think about, so let's drill down on this idea because our audience is like, Diane, Linda, how do you do it? So when you think about, uh, let's drop everybody into like a first time meeting. Um, you've got an incredible network. Somebody that knows you sends a CEO or, or there's some kind of matter you can work on. They, they introduce you to somebody. I bet this happens multiple times a day with you because you've, you've built such a, a powerful relationship base. So you meet somebody for the first time. First meeting, let's say it's on Zoom, it's over coffee or whatever. What are you looking to do in a first 30 minute meeting to start to build that relationship? I built an entire business development practice over being very involved in the community. Uh, I was the first one president of the state bar. I went on to be president of the American Bar Association, which I believe is the largest voluntary professional association in the world. Uh, but through my construction practice, I was involved in sustainable development before that was in vogue. I've been involved in nonprofits, diversifying corporate boards and diversifying corporate leadership. Uh, through my higher education practice, I became involved in health equity by getting to know medical schools. I work helping homeless veterans get access to justice, and there are many more that I'd love to talk about. But the point is, in telling you this, is along the way, I met people who shared my values, and we shared business relationships after that. And you mentioned that from my community service, I also built a big network of friends like you, who I can introduce to my clients when they cannot uh, solve, when I cannot solve the problems that, that they have. So the... I guess my icebreaker is to talk about the things outside of the day-to-day -day business relationship that are important to them. And always there's a place to connect. Yeah. And you're so good at that. I've seen you in action in sessions, meeting people and things like that. I think what's interesting about that is so many of our clientele are high-end technical experts, not only lawyers, you know, like you, but high-end management consultants at some of the top management consulting firms in the world, architects, engineers, accountants, people, you know, I was an actuary. So people that have a really high technical uh, acumen and expertise, letters after their name to no end. And sometimes people can hesitate to go to that non-work conversation because they're like, well, I should only provide content to the person. I should only talk about the box that's in the work I can do. And I think that's a big mistake. Of course, it's important to be hireable. Of course, it's important to share your expertise, but it's also so important to be human too, not just hireable, but also human. So what's your advice to somebody who says, gosh, you know, Linda, you, 
you've got this big network, I've got sword, I've got one one hundredth that sounds like of what you've got, but I hesit say somebody's hesitating to talk about non work kind of things or non content kind of ways, what would you tell them? Well, first you have to be yourself. But I would say start with something that's relatable. If you're out to lunch and we're all eating outside, I guess now because of COVID, uh, talk about the weather. Uh, just start a conversation, but don't lead with, I'm the best engineer. I can do this for you. It is, it's, it's a super big turnoff. You, you have to build some relationship. If it's on the phone, if it's on video, start with something that's relatable, something in the news, something that happened to you that day. You were out walking the dog. I don't have a dog, but I'm, I'll try to relate. Uh, you were out walking the dog and the neighbor came by and said, did you see the patch of ice? Over you? There's, there's got to be something that, that you feel. It's got to come from in here that you can, that you can break the ice with. I love that. And with the science behind it, a lot of, some of our audience knows, some of it doesn't, but tons of science that says we say yes to people we like more often and that we do business with people we like. And the number one correlation by a bunch of research out of Santa Clara University is that um, the number one correlation to likability is commonality. And that's what you're talking about. Find something in common. It can be that you both took a break yesterday because it was 79 degrees for on a sunny day and you talked about that walk in the park, or it could be something really deep and meaningful, a cause that they believe in that you happen to believe in too, that you're able to notice on LinkedIn or Twitter or social media that you can bring up. So these can be small, these can be life-changing, but but commonality is huge. So how do you, um, so say you're in that first five minutes of the conversation, you're you're eating outdoors, the, the we're, we're starting to get back to normal and the pandemic, and you're, you're sort of having this sort of human conversation what kind of things are you doing very practical to find commonality? How, how do you do it? That is a very difficult thing to teach because the, every conversation is going to be different. Every interaction you have is going to be different. Yep. But by starting at the we're all enjoying the same weather kind of conversation, usually the person you're talking with gives you the clue and then yep. you take it to the next level. So yeah, the weather was great, but I had to miss it because my kid got the chicken pox and we had to go to the doctor. Oh, I, I, I had the chicken pox. It was horrible. I missed clock arithmetic in second grade because we, we, we I, I, my, my parents had to make a, a little paper plate pie clock. I mean, whatever it is. And also I think I, I, I'll relate to you some, that when I just told the story, I gave you a lot of detail. And, or the story about my grandfather's grocery store, which I really didn't even think we would wind up talking about today because I, I, when I talk about it, it's usually when I talk to young lawyers about why I became a lawyer. But I put detail in the story because the, the detail interests me, but also I think it's interesting to other people. Yeah, and if it boils down to these two things, offering detail through story, what you're doing, what you're about to do, the holiday you're going on in three weeks. We don't want to say, I'm going on vacation in three weeks. We want to share what we're doing, what we're looking forward to. And so offering detail, and then I know you're really good at this because I've seen you do it, asking for detail. So if somebody says they're going on holiday in three weeks, say, hey, where are you going? Well, asking for those details we're by offering details and asking for details, we're just going to stumble into commonality at some point. Yeah. Your thoughts. I, I want to take this in a slightly different direction because commonality is critical, but diverse people in, in the various professions have struggled for years with feeling like they're not part of the, the team. They're not, they don't have these common, uh, relationships. And it's extremely important for leaders in organizations to make sure that the diverse members of your team feel welcome and are welcome. And if you are a diverse person going into a business development meeting, 
there are lots of areas of commonality. Don't, don't be nervous or frightened about it. Think it through, take a deep breath because we're all human beings. And candidly, it's a lot easier than it was when I was the only woman in the room <laughs> that that was, I was the only woman in the law firm, all of those things. Uh, I remember once having a woman client that called my boss and said, are you sure I should have a woman lawyer? <laughs> so it, it, you, you have, everybody has uh, things that hold them back either up in here or in the real world. Everything can be conquered. Just march forward. There, the answer is there and it always comes from being yourself. Linda, I, I can't, I, a lot of times I'll synthesize an episode that was a mic drop moment. I'm not going to do it. That's the end. You crushed it. <laughs> People are going to want to reach out to you. They're going to they want to say thank you for this inspirational message. They might. You handle such a broad base of of matters at Baker Donaldson, and you assemble teams around you to help. You can almost tackle anything. Um, where should people go to say thank you for this episode or to inquire about your legal services? What do you say? I'm always interested in meeting new people. And so LinkedIn is a good way to find me. Uh, my email address is a good way to find me. So either way, I look forward to hearing from everyone. Perfect. And then just in case somebody's barreling down the highway, what is your email address? Go ahead and say it and we'll put it in. Not the show so easy. Yep. It's L Klein and Klein is spelled K-L-E-I-N, L Klein at Baker Donaldson, D-O-N-E-L-S-O-N.com. Perfect. L Klein at Baker Donaldson.com. It's D-O-N-E-L. E-L-S-O-N. We'll put that in the show notes, everybody. Linda is a gem of a person. She's a trailblazer. She will help you in any way she can. She's, I can't even, can't even start to describe the number of people you've helped, Linda. And now you've helped all the listeners on our, our show. So thanks for being on the show. Everybody, hey, follow, subscribe, the podcast, the show, whatever one of the almost 30 platforms you're on, set up those notifications. This was great. And we've got four more episodes with Linda coming up next. Thanks, Linda. Thank you.